Hello, in this video we're going to talk about uh, write checks. Uh, so this is our uh, 2015 QuickBooks. The one I have is uh, uh, QuickBooks Accountant, but we're just going to uh, talk uh, that we can use it on QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier, uh, QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Enterprise. So in general, you will all have same write checks in here. So we're going to focus on this write checks today. So when you say write checks, of course it's, it's, it's for writing checks, but this is also for uh, uh, entering bank uh, debit cards, ATM withdrawals, bank fees, a wife transfer, and so on. So we will use this write checks to enter all those transactions that will take the money out of your bank account. All right, so let's focus on this write checks. So write checks is right here, it's on home page screen, or you can go there from banking and write checks right here, write checks, because here's your write checks form. You can also go from here, home page, it's the same thing. All right, so, so in write checks, the first thing you need to do is select your bank account. So in this case, I have a multiple bank accounts. So make sure you choose the right bank account. So that's very important because it takes out money from your bank account. And the next here is will say the ending balance, that's your bank balance. So if your account is up to date, this is your bank balance. Uh, so uh, per QuickBooks. So in your bank account, it may look different because you may not have uh, all the deposits. They may not have all your uh, uh, checks cast. So this is your QuickBooks ending balance. And at some point, this balance should match with your bank account. All right. So so here's your first selection is your, your, your bank account. And this is number. So this is your check number. So if you if you have uh, printed checks, if you're writing manual check, you already have check number. So so if you're printing checks, then you basically it will just say print letter, and you won't see the check number in here. So just say print select this print letter one. So now so this you don't see that number twenty three. If you take this one out, you will see it to print, and you can just write down your check number in here. Let's say your check number is twenty three. Let's say one zero two three. So that's your check number. It's right here. So you can just sign check number and then move forward, or you can assign uh, print letter. You can select print letter and then uh, assign check number later on. So if you if writing manual check, you already have the check number. So it's right here. But if you are printing check computer check then you will select this print letter and then when you're ready to print check it will it will it will give you a place to assign your check number and normally when you print check you may have more than one check you could do best of printing so that's how it works all right let's say you want to you want to do a manual check as you can see the moment you uncheck this one then you'll, you'll just say print so you just have to override and write check number in here. Let's say this is check number, and here's your date. Date you're writing check, and let's, let's say you have you're paying for the American Airlines right here. American Airlines, you're buying some, uh, you bought some tickets, and you're paying by check. Or let's take another one. So this is your uh, vendor list from here. It's all vendors. Let's say you, you have ABC Auto Finance. And do you want to pay for uh, some, uh, some of your uh, auto expense? You just select the account number from here, automobile expense. So this is a chart of account. This is your chart of account. The moment you select your expense right here, you have expense and item. We'll come back to items in a minute, but this is default. So expense, so you can select account number, the expense category, 
uh, from uh, from the charter account right here. Okay, let's say this is your uh, uh, your uh, your automobile expense. Let's say it's uh, two hundred dollars. And let's say this is uh, this one you're making payment for. Uh, let's say it's for July. You're making July payment. Just write down July payment. And uh, uh, let's say you also have uh, uh, some sort of uh, interest expense on this one. So just let's add interest expense to this one. Let's say the interest expense is fifteen dollars. Like this, so I, it, so this, so this is, so you call this split. You know, you have a two separate lines here. So if you just one and make another line to include the expense, then you call it split. So we have split here. You can keep on adding if you want, you know. But uh, so the moment you add this fifteen dollars to this two hundred dollars, as you can see in here. The, the check amount is uh, is two fifteen now. It's two hundred plus fifteen, two fifteen. All right. So let's clear this one more time. All right. Let's select the same vendor, ABC Auto Finance. So now you know you need to pay two hundred fifteen dollars. So you can put two fifteen in here, or if you just two hundred, see what happens. Let's just say you started at two hundred dollars. So uh, the selection here is automobile expense, which is this. It's two hundred dollars. Now, now it does match with the check number. So now you want you also want to split and uh, inter interest expense in here. Let's say fifteen dollars. All right. So so now as you can see here, there's a difference of fifteen dollars if it doesn't match. All right. So. In that case, what you have to do is uh, delete this line, and uh, all you have to do is recalculate here. Here's recalculate button. Recalculate. Now you see 215. So the bottom line is, if you have split accounts, you just start from here. Just keep on entering the uh, amount. Don't start from here. Don't write. Uh, don't start from here. So just start from here, from the split amount. So, so then you're automatically calculating here, all right? So let's just say this is check number 2013, and it's done. So that's all you got to do. So just save and close, and, or you can just print it from here if you want. Just check print. If you want to do a manual check, print the one check print here. You can just print it, and it will, it will say print check number. Let's say you just want to use 2000, 1000 to this number. And you will see the screen and just print it. And that's done. So normally you, you, you choose the voucher check. It, it, it works a lot better. So that three, three, uh, you have a three stops in one, you know, the, the, the voucher check, you have the check, and then you have two, two stuff. One goes with the check, the other one you keep it, uh, uh, for your own record and so you have to buy that computer check for QuickBooks you can buy from uh, uh, into right here is the order checks uh, it's more it's more money but you can also buy from uh, online place and it's a lot lot cheaper cheaper like uh, maybe half half cheaper so if you want to save money you have to look for uh, online place or even Costco they carry QuickBooks uh, uh, checks you just have to specify it's QuickBooks and it's on the list so so that's what you're gonna do so even if you order from here into is not business of printing checks they, they, they also rely on some supply anyway so it probably comes from the same supplier so if you want to save money instead of using this just uh, use some online stuff okay so so much for that one so it's just now all you have to do is save and close or save and new let us use save and new all right, so you're gonna okay. So we saved it. As you can see here, next check number is one thousand twenty-four. Okay, 
So you know how to write checks now. Okay. So now before we move forward, uh, let's let's separate what's expense and what's items. So the expense it, it comes out from your chart of account. You directly assign to your chart of accounts right here, all the chart of accounts. But if you select items, it's it's listed to your uh, uh, item list and item list is mapped to your chart of accounts so when you do the invoice you will also see the same stuff in here all these all these things item list you also see when you do the invoicing let's check all right let's just look at the invoice part here we're not going to uh, analyze this uh, too much but I just want to show you the difference in here. So as you can see, it's the same screen here. This all comes from item list. It's all from item list. It's in here, list, item list. So this is all the item list. So in order to create invoice, you have to have item code. And in order to sign item code, you have to use the item list. Okay. So the whole idea here is if you want to link your cost, to your invoice or income, then you will be using this item. So income linked to expense, you use items, and if you just want PL expense from a chart of accounts, then you expense. So items is more like if you for job costing, product costing. So at that case you have to use items. So you can link cost as well as revenue and the source of your revenue comes from your invoicing or sales received all right so as you can see the difference here if you have expense and items so in expense you have item it looks very similar to your uh, invoicing type so as you can see your item let's select one here let's just say you're buying some apples uh, Apple phone from somebody. Let's just select the vendor in here. Let's say Apple. And let's say you're buying, let's say uh, the quantity is 10. So, as you can see here, it automatically does the calculation and uh, so this is mostly you're going to use it for like inventory or it's going to bill uh, this amount to your customer uh, for direct billing. So you can use that too. So if you have customer job in here, you select somebody like this and make it billable. And if it's just for inventory, then you don't have customer at that point and then there's nothing in here. So don't. So there's no customer at that point, so this is for inventory. So that's the difference. Let's just say you 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 want to uh, you want to buy some inventory item and you want to pay by check. So right here, it's the same new. That's all you got to do. So now you know the difference between items and expenses. So that the items is directly linked to your your income side uh, from item list. So save and new. All right, so that's done. So you know the difference between expense and items now, and also, uh, so you know how to write checks and split. Okay, so let's move on to another one. Uh, although it says write checks, how about uh, I use debit card a lot? What do I do? Okay, so the, although it says write checks. You can also use this for debit card. So the only difference is instead of writing check number here, the reference, you just write debit. Just write debit. So this is for debit card. So you recognize the transaction as coming from debit card, not from writing check, although the form is still writing checks in here. So just to make, just to be consistent, whenever you have a debit card, 
just say debit card in here, just debit in here. You can write debit card too if you want. So it's you know, debit card or debit. So just be consistent. So the entry is still the same. You can just select expense. Let's say you use a debit card and you bought some American Airlines tickets. So it's a travel expense. Let's say it's two hundred dollars. So let's say this is uh, travel expense, not read the customer, not billable. So let's save a new. So that's for the debit card. And so you can use sometimes debit card to buy some inventory. Let's say you bought some inventory using your uh, bank debit card. Let's say product A, you bought it. Let's say it's uh, 100 and the cost is $15, let's say. So you pay $1,500, charge to debit card. So it's saving you. That's done. Okay, how about if I do some ATM withdrawal? I use uh, ATM uh, card to do some withdrawals. Let's just put ATM right here. Okay, so the ATM withdrawal, if it's for business, 100% business, then you will select uh, your uh, expense account number from chart of accounts. Let's say you wanted to buy some supplies from the expense side in here. Let's say office supplies. Let's say you went to Staples and you wanted to buy some office supplies. And you had to withdraw some money, or or uh, uh, or you found a vendor, but they don't take ATM card; they just want cash. So, if that's the case, you just have to select. Let's say the vendor is, uh, let's say Bob or something. Let's see what do we have. Oh, we have Bob in here. Let's say. Uh, so you, you you just bought some office supplies or some computer uh, printer from Bob, let's say from Craigslist or something, and this person just wants cash, and you went to the uh, bank and use the ATM card to buy this stuff, $300. Or it could be you just did ATM withdrawal to do some traveling or petty cash or whatever, so you just, the, the, the transaction wise still the same, so you just put the ATM in here. So uh, let's move on to another one. Okay, so how about like bank fee, bank statement, they always charge fee, you can just say fee, and then you have a bank service account in here, bank service charges, let's say it's, it's a $15 charge, so just select fee in here, and you can select the bank num name in here or just you can just say fee if you want right here fee like there vendor so save a new okay and same thing with uh, wire transfer let's say uh, you need to do some wire transfer to buy uh, something let's say pick one vendor in here all right let's pick Samsung and they 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 want uh, they don't check check but you want they really want some wire transfer so they can the products right away let's just say buying some inventories let's see what do they have in here all right I'll buy some galaxy s4 in here all right let's say you want to buy uh 125 units as you can see we still have money in here so let's save in here. so you got an idea now so this screen is uh if you, for writing checks, bank debit card, ATM withdrawals, bank fee, wire transfer, any 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 way, any bank withdrawals you may see in your bank statement, just indicate in here. 
and try to be consistent uh, it will work out pretty good as you can see here the moment you write the check the ending balance it, 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 it goes down so that's the whole idea of course you know you're incurring expense uh, expense or adding inventory so, so here is the ending balance now uh, and uh, the whole idea is try to be consistent and when you try to do your uh, uh, bank reconciliation uh, it will make uh, it will separate check versus other types of banking transactions and it will be a lot easier to do the bank reconciliation so that's about it and, uh, uh, and the whole idea here is the uh, uh, and if you want to attach file in here we have some receipts you can do that too so you can attach bill in here so you can scan it or you know the scan or just the just from the computer if you have something from your desktop you know like that you can do that uh, so and then at that point you have invoice payment and also attach you know, attach receipt as well so uh, then the transaction become uh, pretty complete uh, so that's about it and uh, the other side is if you want to delete you can just delete from here right here is a delete you just click delete delete or void so difference between delete and void delete once you delete you will no longer see uh, anything recorded in vendor section or anything like that uh, but you will still see uh, it will take it to log uh, under audit log so you will still see all deleted checks uh, under audit log that's about it but you don't see any anywhere else but void is basically once you void it this 90,000 it becomes zero so the, it will just say zero it's gone see so you still have the information in here but but it's voided so there's there's no there's no money involved on this one that's a zero this is basically for record, record kicking you can save and save and new you want to delete but i'm avoided that's done and if you want to delete you got it right here and you can create a copy and if you're going to write it writing the same check for next time you can just create a copy in here and memorize the check again uh you know let's play around with those things if that works for you and uh, uh, if you have if you should pure purchase order to your uh, vendors then plus you have to you should purchase order and then you can select purchase order from here and apply against uh, uh, this this payment in here. All right. So the whole idea right here, right checks. So, and then you can print checks from here. So it's basically these two: write checks, print checks. If it's a computer check, if it's a manual check, then then it's done. Write checks. So you don't need to print checks. So write check is for Writing, printing check, bank, ATM, debit card, fee, wire, and everything you do uh, that takes out money from your, from your bank account. So that should do it. And uh, if you have other questions, we have all kinds of great videos. Visit our website. It's new newquickbooks.com. So it's, it's for desktop 2015 or desktop uh, uh, QuickBooks, visit newquickbooks.com, newquickbooks.com. And if it's for QuickBooks Online or QBO, we also have another website, it's newqbo.com, newqbo.com. So everything is covered. So uh, thank you for watching. Come back again. Thank you.